Okay, so here we go doing painterly sculpts and sculptural paintings. I did this partly because I was really running out of um, space for paintings in a level. There is a limit to the number of paintings you can have. It's, um, it's pretty high for static paintings and animated paintings don't give you quite as much uh, space, but I had a lot of paintings I was running out of room and I thought I would try to make a cloud using a sculpt instead of a painting. I'm just gonna show off the curve tool a little bit here while we're at it. The curve tool is something that really, uh, its greatness is in its, um, in its shape editing menu. So it starts out as a sphere and then you can drag this end out and now you have two additional points in the middle, which you can grab and move. You can do this very freestyle with the move tools also in a way that isn't available on the DS4, but this can really be handy for extremely precise sculpting and cutouts also, because you can always turn it into a negative shape. So for starters, we're just gonna stamp down this kind of a wavy shape back out of here. And then, uh, I actually want to change the fleck type on it, and that is in the style mode. And for clouds, I really like the circle fleck. So I'm just going to change that. And you can't see anything happen yet because it's too smooth of a shape. But in a moment, we will see what happens. I'm going to uh, decrease the sculpture detail, which is loosening the shape in a very particular way. And we're going to decrease it a whole lot. Now the floor has gone red because the sculpt is getting so loose. Decrease it all the way until it almost doesn't really have a physical form anymore. If I go one more, it's actually a little bit too much. So I'll go back to there. Each one of those is a fleck? Those discs? Yes. Yes, each one of these circular shapes is a fleck. And, um... So that's starting to look a little bit more cloud-like. And then I'm gonna go in here. And from in here, I can actually increase the looseness even more, but it kind of disappears when I do that. I'm gonna increase the impasto, which spreads out the flex, and it also spreads out the nuances of the fleck because the circle fleck is not just a circle, it's a series of circles. And it's the same with the square and the triangle and everything else. It's not just one solid shape. It's kind of a little drawing in itself and it gets spread out with the impasto. I'm also gonna play with the ruffle a little bit and that's helping. And so now that's starting to look a little bit more like a cloud. And if I go back into my sculpt here and I just clone it a couple of times and that kind of clumps together a little bit there in the middle. We also need to get a little bit of movement into it to make it look more like a cloud. And so, um, oops, I'm gonna go in here and give it a little bit of throb. Maybe that's a little bit too much and a little bit of boil. And that's an example of how a sculpture can look fairly painterly. It's a little bit solid right in there and you could play with the scale um, a little bit there. There's no opacity tweaks in a sculpture and it does make that fairly hard shadow. If we go in here to the looseness and we change this looseness, you can sh see the shadow kind of breaking up, but it breaks up in chunks. So for something like this, like a cloud, you might want to just tell it not to cast any shadows. And if you want a customized shadow, you can make one, but um, a lot of times you would do this with a painting anyway. It's just an interesting exercise in making a sculpture look like a painting. And so now we'll just leave that there and we'll move on to making a painting that looks like a sculpture. And the first step to that is in fact making a sculpture. I'm going to just stamp down a single sphere. And this is, um, this is a technique that could be useful for making glass that's curved. You can make really good glass using the text tool, and there's a sample of that in the community poppet. But if you wanna make curved glass or anything that's transparent at all, you're gonna need uh, painting. Or if you wanna just make something that you can 
use the duplicate tweak on, you're going to need a painting. So I'm going to show how to make some curved paint strokes here. Go into paint mode. If you need it to be precise, of course, use the grid. For this, I don't need it to be precise, so I'm not going to use the grid. For glass, personally, I kind of like the cubist effect, but you can use anything you want. And I'm going to just start with a plain white so that I can easily tint it later. And now we turn on the surface snap. And just start painting over the surface of this sphere. This can be done a lot better with uh, two moves than with the DS4. And if you're into sculpting and painting, I do recommend learning to use the moves. It will take some time and it might be frustrating at first, but ultimately you can do much more precise work. But if you're not comfortable with the moves, you can definitely do it with the DS4 also. So I'm going to just get rid of that sphere. And now we have, this went a little off to the side because my floor was here and so it surface snapped onto the floor. So ultimately you would not want to have anything else visible aside from the thing that you're surface snapping to. But just for demonstration, we have this spherical kind of a shell. And now if we wanted to make this look a little bit more like glass, we could turn the opacity down. And I often find that it's nice to increase the looseness because you get a nice blend if you go up all the way and then you can really turn down that opacity. Another thing that I'm going to um, change is the shininess. I'm going to make it completely shiny and completely waxy. And those are just my favorite surfaces for making um, a glassy finish. And you could add a little bit of a tint if you wanted to. But that is a way, that's one brush stroke right there. That's a way that you can make a, a complex shape and then you could use the duplicates on it if you wanted to and cover a whole big area with it. This can be useful for making water effects that are uh, very high motion. So I mentioned before that I didn't like using duplicates to make a flat water surface. But uh, if you add a very high speed flow and a lot of waviness to this, you could have something like a churning waterfall. And I actually used this technique recently to make a waterfall. If you made all of your strokes as individual lines going in one direction, then you could also use the animate, uh, sorry, here it is, the animation tab. If I do that now, it does add an effect, but it might not be the effect that you want for water. It's very jittery because of the way that I painted that. And um, just to show an example of what you can do with that, I will bring up something that I uh, recently made. I made this orchid. It's really big here. Of course, you could scale it down. If we scope into this orchid, the whole flower blossom is just one brush stroke. And this center bit is one stamped brush with a lot of, um, all of this has the same tweak settings on it, but a stamp allows you to scatter much more than, um, much more than the brushing flex does. So if I do a stamp and I edit the shape, oops. This is, a, this is a really big painting. I made it at a very large scale, Sorry. which doesn't really matter because that doesn't affect the thermometer, actually. So using a lot of scatter, you can get uh, extra volume. So I made this orchid, and uh, the stem is a stroke, and the leaves are, a are each a little stamped out shape. And it's not too much work to take all of these parts and clone them individually to make several orchids, which you could then populate out to make a field of flowers. And then you'd have to, you know, clone the, the little center part and the stem and the leaves separately as well. But I'll bring out, this is how I made the orchid. I made this sculptural shape, 
which is actually very thermometer intensive because I haven't done anything to optimize it. Can you show me that? So if I look at it in the sculpture detail, you can see this is all bright red. And this was this is made out of um, multiple shapes. It's uh, it's grouped together right now. But if I ungroup it, rather than it being all one sculpt, it's these are these are two clones of the same sculpt, and these two are the same sculpt that have been altered. So they actually are now unique shapes. So this shape here is not really very thermometer friendly. You could use it on something where you want to see the flower really super close up and you could paint extra fine details onto it and all kinds of things. But when you want to populate a field of it, because this is three shapes right here, and then if you added a stem and a couple of leaves, you're at four and then five, six, and then you duplicate that a hundred times to make a field of flowers, that's 600 shapes and that's going to fill up the thermometer really fast. This is one painting and it takes up 1% of the thermometer. And I can duplicate it on a plane a hundred times at no extra cost. So that is how you can make a sculptural painting. And one reason to make a sculptural painting is because only scul only sorry, only paintings have the duplicate tweak. Sculptures don't have that. The one thing that you don't get from this is shadows. So when you make a sculpture, I uh, sorry. So when you make a painting, you're not going to get a shadow from it. And if you need a shadow, you're going to have to make a sculpture to create that shadow. And sculptures cannot duplicate in the tweak menu. So when you do something like a field of flowers, it's going to be shadowless, but you can always use lighting effects or painting effects on the ground to add shadows, or you could do something like you could go in here and you could select a dark color and you could just sort of, oops, I have my surface snap turned on so it's snapping to the stem. But you could just go in here and you could just make some really rough shadow and in the stamp tool, almost done, you have an, an option for fade, and so you could make that fade out at the edges, scale it up really big, and you could just sort of stamp in a shadow effect underneath the flower, and then that would become part of uh, what gets duplicated when you turn it into a big field of flowers. So those are some options when it comes to making duplicates. And I think that's all for this tutorial yes. segment. Uh, stop by dreamsverse.com to meet people, get more information, news and updates. We're all looking forward to dreams. Thanks for watching.